Hello, 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 and welcome back to Live with Kali. I'm your host, Colleen Young. This episode, I went into the kitchen with my friend Adam. Adam and I go way back. We both filmed a pilot for a TV show together last year at Buffalo State during our senior year. We also graduated together from Buffalo State, so go Bengals. <laughs> and that's where I got to see that Adam had quite the on-air presence. Adam had been putting up a lot of cooking Snapchat videos. <laughs> After work, he would go home and cook all these careful recipes and he would share each and every detail with the snapchat viewers including tips for cooking tips for cleaning up which ingredients he was using what techniques he was using and so that was almost like his audition to be on live with Kali I saw these videos and I was like Adam you need to be on my show but I was so excited that Adam was so welcoming for me to come into his kitchen and learn how to cook one of his favorite dishes let me tell you it was a long process he was very detailed and cooked with a little bit of L-O-V-E. The pasta was delicious. I brought the leftovers to work and I ate them and it was like a hug to my stomach. So Adam, thank you for welcoming me into your kitchen and thank you for sharing this recipe with my viewers. Enjoy. I'm out of work now and I'm so hungry, but that's okay because tonight my friend Adam is gonna be on Live with Kali cooking up some dinner. Adam always Snapchatted himself cooking and his Snap stories were always so entertaining, so I asked him to be on my show. What we will be making today is a lemon pepper chicken fettuccine alfredo. Some of the ingredients we do have is, of course, lemon pepper. Not too much of that, because we still have lemons as well, which we will be using black corn pepper, which is my favorite to actually grind itself. Minced onion, paprika, minced garlic, onion powder, some parsley, some sea salt, and of course, chicken, and the fettuccine, and the Alfredo sauce. Just so you know, guys, the fire is on, because it's cleaning a little bit of the eyes. That's how you clean them off, if you want to know. So if you ever were looking to see how you get your eyes back silver, just turn it on real low flame. If you're trying to move quickly, you turn it on high. But if you just put them on a low flame and let it sit, it'll clean it off probably within a half hour. Adam is teaching me so much. So we have our mixing bowl, which we'll be using for the chicken. Let's clean the chicken first. We can also cut up some of the pieces, but we'll season them before we cut them first, just so you guys know. Colleen, come in here. You gotta be seen. You know, this is your show. We need you in here. We need you to be seen, okay? Okay, I'm here. All right, perfect. Let's open this chicken. Okay. Put it in here, and then I'll show you how to clean it. Don't get scared. Look at that savage. Don't get afraid. Gross. Beautiful, beautiful. Who taught you how to cook? My mother. I learned a lot from my mom, and I learned a lot in school. I do have my degree in hospitality, yes. No! So, oh, business... I you went to the state for. For two, actually. For business, I came in originally from upstate, and then I graduated with both a business and a hospitality degree. Wow, it's quite hospitable here, guys. Making sense now that he was a hospitality <laughs> man. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to clean the chicken. We'll start off by rinsing it off a little bit, and we'll throw a little vinegar in it, just to make it all clean. Wow. Don't want to let it sit too much, only because... If you let it sit, then the flavor of the vinegar is going to get in there and it'll, yeah, nasty flavor. All we're using the vinegar for is just clean purposes only. I learned that one from a month ago. How long do you have to do this for? About a good 5-10 minutes, not mm -hmm. even that long. Chicken, if you feel it, has that like film over it. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people just rinse them all with cold water or hot water and then you would be rinsing for a very long time. Vinegar actually speeds the process up drastically, actually. Wipe them down and then you won't even put a film over it anymore. So now that it's not all slimy anymore, we'll put it in another bowl just to the side to say that that's done. So besides cooking, you've got your job. What's your job? I sell cars at Northtown Auto. So uh, you gotta change, clean the mixing bowl, only because we don't want no salmonella or nothing. Raw anything, it's mostly in chicken you can find it in, mm -hmm. but you can also find it in fish some vegetables from cross-contamination. Mm -hmm. So that's a very big one. I told you that I like pasta and chicken. Those are my favorite foods, and that's what we're making tonight, but what are your favorite foods? I have numerous. As, as me being a cook and in hospitality, you learn not to enjoy just one particular type of food. You like to try it all. Okay. But I kind of go against that. My favorite of all time mm -hmm. would probably have to be my mother's Pork chops, fried pork chops. Oh. With uh, white rice. It's a real Spanish meal. White rice, red beans, and fried plantains. <laughs> oh my God, to die for. You notice there's a little water in there. That's the excess water from some of the uh, chicken here. We're gonna leave that in there. 
The reason being is because it'll help with some of the seasoning. The water here will also make sure that we're not using too much seasoning. We don't want to make it either too much of this flavor, too much of that flavor, too salty, too this, too that. So that's why I usually leave the water in there. Start with the lemon. Do you have a tattoo? I do have a tattoo. What is it? <laughs> What's your tattoo? Oh, hey! I saw a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people see it because of the tail. It's yeah, a butterfly. A lot yeah. of people think it's a butterfly. Oh my god, we're getting behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. It's a fish. It's a koi fish. Now, the story behind the koi fish is going upstream Japanese river. It's a Chinese folklore. Going up Japanese river. They say that the fish will always go through trials and tribulations getting up to the top. And once it makes it to the top, it's supposed to turn into a dragon to reveal success, overall happiness, that you've made it to where you want to be at. Now, a fish going down, as you see mine go up, fish going down means that it made it as far as possible up this river, it couldn't make it anymore, and it's content where it's at. So now it's ready to relax and just go down. So that's the difference between a fish going up and a fish going down. And then the colors also mean a different thing as well. Mine's is red and black. As you can see again, now the red symbolizes the love, the love and affection of people. And the black usually symbolizes people who lost that love and affection. So it goes like that. The whole point of the fish is I don't want it to be completely black, but if it happens to turn black because the scales get colored in from red, then that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Thank you. Thanks for the background. No problem. So we're gonna slice the lemon. So the lemon goes on the chicken before we even cook it? Yep. Okay. Because lemon is a strong flavor, so it carries. Okay. So we get a few lemon slices. Now the lemon slices we're going to put away to the side, only because we're going to use it later. Okay? Mm -hmm. We'll even use some of it as a garnish, and then we'll put some in the oven with the rest of the products. So let's put that in there. Now I'm gonna have to wipe that board again, just so you know. Now olive oil, major key. Major key alert. <laughs> Look, I'm with this pretty girl here. You see this? Right? Look, all shy and bashful. Major key alert, olive oil. Only because, one, a lot of people don't know that olive oil is actually good brain food. Food that uses olive oil to cook with actually is proven fact to increase your IQ. And because it doesn't have all of that extra fat that regular oil has in it, it actually is really healthy for you. All right, so we're gonna squeeze our lemon. In there. It's okay if you get a little of the pulp in there too. If you can hear a little guest star, it's Coco. <laughs> There's Coco. So if you can hear Coco, that's Coco. Hey Coco. Hi, hey Coco. So now we got our lemon juice going on here. Perfect timing since we're prepping the chicken. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the pasta. So we'll get some water going in there. You know, cold water preferably. Don't use hot. Hot water has really? lead in it. <gasps> yes. So don't use hot water. Remember. Yep, water comes from pipes. How long have those pipes been there? Nobody knows. Yeah. So you don't ever want to get that excess lead from the pipe into your water. So always use cold water. Now a lot of people think hot water, boiling it, will yeah. destroy it. No, not lead. Okay. Lead, yeah, it doesn't do it that way. Major key, don't cook with hot water. Don't cook with hot water. And as if you have, it's all right. You know, it doesn't kill you yet, but I'm just letting you guys know ahead of time. Now just put it on there. And then turn it on. We're gonna also use this pan here for the chicken. We're gonna grill it. Now the whole point of the grilling thing is because we want to cook the chicken a little bit before we actually throw it in the oven. Only because if we don't cook the chicken, then it would be in the oven longer. We want to kind of speed up the process. Do you see yourself going into cooking professionally eventually? Yes, actually. The whole point of me getting a hospitality degree was because growing up, I always enjoyed seeing my mother in the kitchen cooking, doing her thing, you know, throwing it down. And I always wanted to learn, I always wanted to get insight from it. So what I ended up doing was I came to school to get a business degree and then decided, you know what, maybe I'll use that business degree to open a future restaurant. When I found out Buff State offered the hospitality program, I said, wait a minute, why not do two degrees? Why not get them both? Why not do something in the future? Later on, I know exactly what I'm doing in the kitchen and in the restaurant. With a hospitality degree, I know what I'm doing, how to run my own business. Let me do them both of them. So we're gonna use about a half a tablespoon of garlic. A teaspoon of garlic is equivalent to one clove. All right, but since we're using half a tablespoon, it's technically two cloves mm -hmm. that we're gonna be using. Okay, we'll use a little bit of oregano, give it that Italian feel. How much would you say? Half a teaspoon, not too much, you know? Paprika, we'll use about half a teaspoon. This is just for a little color. Remember guys, I'm using a tablespoon, so use it a whole lot less than what I'm using. 
all right? I have to accommodate for a lot more chicken. A lot of this stuff is usually just eyeballing it. We'll use just a little bit of lemon pepper because remember, we already have lemon in there. Lemon pepper is just to enhance the lemon flavor. And then you can also spread it out evenly too. Yeah. So when you go home, you said your mama cooks for you, but are you cooking for your mama too when you go home? I try to, but uh, <laughs> my mother don't let me. She's still the queen of the kitchen. <laughs> She's starting to want me to start cooking in the kitchen. So I told her the next time I go home, but I tell her this every time and it never really happens. All right, so we're gonna use just a little bit of onion powder because we also have minced onion that we're gonna use. I'd rather put the minced onion in the pot when it's cooking, just so that way it can soften up a little bit. And preferably, I like to use real onions, but because of time, we're gonna use. The minced. See, these are unnamed brandies at Clover Valley, only a dollar. Preferably, I like to use black pepper corn. It's the same thing as regular pepper, but because you can actually grind it yourself, you get a little bit more of that flavor, that actual fresh flavor. If you're gonna use the same thing I'm using, probably do about maybe five to six turns, and then we'll start mixing. So you're gonna really mix it in there and get those flavors in there. It sounds all nasty and just. You now you see why I like using the peppercorn. Let me show you guys. They actually stick in there and a lot of the stuff stays on the chicken. And that's what we want. We want it to stay on the chicken. You want to get them like this. A lot of people like to make fun and make jokes. Oh, I bet you you're going to use sofrito, adobo, sazon, and blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not going to use all of that. Only because all of that has a lot of sodium in it. It's too salty. You don't want to do that. We have salt here. We'll just throw a little salt in there and then call it a day. We don't need to put all that extra stuff in there. Major key alert. We're going to use this. Major key. Major key. <laughs> not too much either. So let's uh, mix that oil now. Quick way to check if your oil is hot enough, just run your hand like that, see? Simple, that means your oil is hot. Now usually, a good thing to do, stab holes in your chicken, so actually it cuts through. Cleaning off the cutting board? You have to, can't pass excess nothing. I mean now, it's okay if you're gonna go from fruit, vegetables, to meat, but it's not okay if you're gonna go from meat to fruit and vegetables. It, then it's not okay. okay. We'll just take a piece, <laughs> just like that, and just stab it. Stab it up. Sometimes you can even put a little slit in it. You want it to cook evenly. We stab this thing up, turn it around. Throw it, so. Throw it in your pan. I'll flip it for you. Okay. Ready. All right, so we can transfer it into this pot. This one? Put it ready. I've learned already so much. <laughs> There's a lot of learning, I'm telling you, and learning. it's quick too. It's quick learning. There's only two types of levels of chicken, cooked and uncooked. <laughs> Extra juicy. Oh, it looks good. You did an excellent job stabbing this chicken. <laughs> I was angry. I was saying, did you have uh, experience before? <laughs> <laughs> see it just sits there and marinates and then you see all your seasoning sticks to the chicken that's exactly what you want that's how you know you seasoned it enough and you did it right and look there's actually still liquid in the pan Yummy. i stab straight down and i spread apart with the tongs here mm -hmm. you can use a fork to see or you can just slice it down the middle still a little that chicken color that you see when you first buy it mm -hmm. that raw color that pink. You want to try to get it not too pink, but a little white. But you can smell the lemon from the chicken. I wish you guys had smell vision because wow. Yeah, smell vision <laughs> will help you out. This just means that actual chicken and the lemon is good because it's in the chicken now. This looks like a straight up Wegmans ad. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I just realized that. <laughs> the fettuccine I mean, pasta. You're welcome, Wegmans. You're welcome, Wegmans. You should pay us. <laughs> We're going to cut. We're gonna save this one, but we're gonna squeeze this one. Now, don't squeeze the whole thing on it, just over the top, something nice. Only because you want a little bit more of that lemon to get in there, just really get in there. I remember all the little holes we stabbed in there. And that's the whole point of this chicken, right? It's called lemon pepper chicken. Yep, when the chicken is peak, I'll leave a piece in the pot, just so it can cook a little bit more. 
and she could taste it so she could see what the chicken tastes like. Okay, okay. One thing that my mother always told me and that I did learn in school, clean as you go. It'll be a whole lot easier when you get to the end of everything. <laughs> you realize there's something you're not gonna use anymore? Clean it, put it away. Now, we have fresh parsley here. I'm gonna show you guys a trick. We're gonna dry them out. I'm gonna show you guys how they actually make parsley in the jar. Looks all nice and all flowery, right? You can always find the difference between parsley and cilantro by smelling it. Cilantro has a much more stronger smell. Parsley doesn't really. It just smells amazing. We'll take our cutting board here and we're gonna pull the leaves off. Parsley will look a little wet already. That's all right. That's because it's a plant. We'll take this much paper towel, not the major key. We'll put the parsley in the paper towel. And you dry it up, right? Actually, roll it up. Just squeeze, 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 squeeze. Then you take some type of mutter, spoon, or something, and you just really press. Because you gotta really get it all out. You'll see the paper turn green, too, because you're really getting it all out. And then it turns into what this looks like, actually. It turns into what that stuff is. So we're seeing it from start to finish. Yeah, you see the green is actually getting everywhere. Now look at that. Doesn't look all so lively anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> Only because we took all that liquid out. Don't forget about what you got on the stove. <laughs> that looks so pretty. It does, don't it? <laughs> Throw some salt in our water here. What does that do? Well, we're using the salt to give the noodles some flavor. Water and the noodles will stick with each other. If you notice, with the chicken making, we used no salt at all. Which is a good thing. The reason why is because chicken has flavor. No sodium. We want to make it as healthy as possible. Because you're going to get all of that sodium in the Alfredo sauce. So let's turn, let's turn. So this is another key factor to look for. As I turn, some of the grill marks here. Now this chicken is ready to come out. Get grill marks here, which is a really good thing. Let's turn our chickens off. So let's grab one slice, right here. See how it isn't fully cooked, mm -hmm. but it's cooked here. Mm -hmm. Which means when we put it in the oven, it'll actually cook real nice. So let's go a little closer. So you see it's pink. It mm -hmm. looks like a steak almost. But mm -hmm. like I said to you guys, there's only two forms of chicken, cooked and uncooked. I like to be safe. That's the only thing. So make nice pieces. You can cut them smaller. We got some pieces of chicken here going. This is good because as you see, it's not fully cooked all the way, but it's actually cooked enough. So that way when we throw it in the oven, mm -hmm. it'll cook all the way. And then another good thing is that when it's actually cooking in the oven, the juices from the chicken will go in the pasta. So then it leaves some of the lemon flavor in the pasta as well. So while Adam keeps cooking, he's letting me test the chicken. So I'm gonna try it. Gotta try it. It's hot. Oh my God. <laughs> he's not messing around. This is so good. You can taste the lemon? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You can taste everything. I wanna hug it. <laughs> this is so good. You want some? Yeah, let me try it. Oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> Guys, I wish you could eat it. But now you have the recipe. Yeah, lemon gives it that tart, right? Mm -hmm. You can taste the spice from the couple. Mm -hmm. I can taste whatever it is. It's yeah. good. <laughs> well, I'm glad you appreciate it. Thank you, Adam. Okay, stay tuned for the final product. Some people break their fettuccine. Me personally, I don't break the fettuccine only because I like the noodles to be long. So that way you actually have it. You got that little twisty of the fork thing. Some people like that. I know I personally do. I think it was when I was a kid. I used to enjoy doing it. So you can do that. Or you can break them in half if you want to make a little bit more than what you have. Since we already have two boxes, we're not going to break them in half. We're kind of okay with that. So let's just pour it in there. And the good thing about it is it's noodles, so it'll bend by itself. And then we just close the pot. Good etiquette, guys, would be to make sure you take your foil, cover up your food. There's a lot of germs and bacteria in there. Yeah, a lot of it will die when you throw it in the oven, but it's just good etiquette. Start getting into the habit of that stuff. Good for you to use. Look, this is definitely a Wegmans commercial. <laughs> <laughs> heavy duty aluminum foil, only because it's stronger, sturdier. We're gonna be using the heavy duty for the pan process too. So while we're waiting for that, let's start preparing our sauces. We could have made these by scratch, put a lot of cheese and all of that other stuff. I wasn't ready for that right now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use it out the jar. 
just to make it a little bit more efficient. It's mm -hmm. gonna take at least a half an hour to do though, from mm -hmm. scratch. It's gonna use a lot of like heavy whipping cream, a lot of cheeses, and some pepper. If you look, there's some pepper in there. If you ever noticed, that's what the little black dots in Alfredo is. Wow. It's pepper. So we got the noodles boiling, the sauce, and the sauce heating up. In the and the chicken's waiting. Now here's a little trick. Go on the refrigerator. Major key. <gasps> no way. Yep. Now you want to use your milk and get the rest of the sauce from the Alfredo. Now remember, Alfredo is a milk-based sauce. Don't use water, you water it down. Get all of your sauces out and everything. And then we pour it in. <gasps> so you're That's no it. wasting. Major key. Major key. And it's gone. <gasps> That's how you can also stretch out your Alfredo, make it a little bit more creamier. Put some milk in there. Try to recycle too as much as possible. So just rinse out your jars, put them to the side, put them in your green bins. Does that make it faster to heat? Yeah, because it keeps the steam inside and it keeps the noodles steaming, heats up the noodles faster. You don't want to cook the noodles all the way through, only because you want them al dente so they can separate nice and simple. Because when you take the noodles out of the hot water, guess what the noodles are still doing? They're still cooking. So when you take them out, they'll get soft enough to be where they need to be. We're gonna take the other half of lemon to slice it up and we're gonna start cleaning up at the same time just to make things a little bit more efficient. Someday you're gonna be able to run your own good professional kitchen. <laughs> I want to honestly, it's my plan. Thank you, I appreciate that. I can see it. <laughs> now, garlic, minced garlic. If it's not open, yeah, put it away. You can store it away. Once you open it, like we have, you refrigerate it. So now let's work on this Alfredo. Wow. Lots of pasta. Lots of pasta. <laughs> Throw some olive oil in there too. Okay, so that way it doesn't stick. Mix that in there. Because when these noodles are done, we're gonna transfer them immediately. What we can do though. So let's take our extra juicy chicken. <laughs> Set your oven to 350 to 400. Now we're not gonna cover the chicken because we want it to cook fast. People say you cover it, it'll cook fast that way too. It will, but we just really not gonna cook it thoroughly. We just wanna cook it enough. Like I said, it's already pretty much cooked. We just gotta get some of those little pink pieces and then we'll mix it with the Alfredo. So while that's doing that, we can start in the Alfredo. How much Parmesan would you say? Just the eye bullet. We have two jars in there. So I'm gonna use two tablespoons for one jar. If you're gonna do two jars, then about four. We'll use fresh parsley. <laughs> Okay, throw it in the sauce. You're not just settling with the jar, you're making it your own. Yep, and then really low flame because marinara, alfredo sauce, vodka sauce, it gets hot quickly. Not to mention it'll boil quickly. I'm gonna use tongs for this, but you don't have to. You can use a spoon, you can do fork, whatever. And now we'll just mix it around. Super creamy. We're gonna put some more parsley in there. We put a little parsley, we'll put a little bit more in there. Now, remember we didn't throw that other half of lemon away. Well, this is the one we used for the chicken originally. So let's throw a little bit more in there. This is what I enjoy to do, like I was telling you guys. What are you checking? How firm it is and how soft it is. So what some people, what they'll do is they'll actually throw like vegetables in the Alfredo sauce. Like some people throw carrots, maybe corn, something as simple as beans. I've seen peas in there before, right? Peas is a good one. So they'll throw peas in there as well, but you wanna know something? We're just gonna keep it plain, throw the parsley in there. Cause parsley gets soft like spinach would. So that's why we're gonna put that in there and then we'll garnish it with the parsley so you see a pretty plate. Even though some of the noodles are a little hard, it will cook. And remember, we still gotta throw it in the oven. So it's gonna cook then too. We'll put it in the oven and then voila, just like that. So let's take our chicken out. See the product we have here. Mm. See that? It's looking yummy, looking yummy, yummy. So what we'll do now, well, I'm gonna have Kalinga. Let's <gasps> take the Alfredo off. So you're gonna take some of these pieces and throw them in there. The ones that look like this, just throw them in there. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right, two of those. Here you go. Which one's not to throw in? The solid looking ones. Just the ones that look like they got a little bit more juice in them. Okay. Just throw them in there. Okay. Because that's flavor. We want the flavor to go in there. How many? Uh, as many as you find. 
Am I doing it right? You are. You look like you're doing it pretty good to me. Okay. Look up, Marlon. Say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Extra juicy. <laughs> there you go. Okay, put that in there. We're gonna throw it back on the flame and we're gonna let that juice sit in the Alfredo sauce. Now you can cover it. I don't cover it. I'll leave it just like that. Now you see all of that? Mm -hmm. So the chicken residue and all the chicken juice. Good. It's really good. Just so you guys can see. Are we gonna save it? Yep, we're gonna save it. gonna layer it all right I'm gonna show you another thing that I usually do and people are like wow why do you do that why do you do that because I really love cheese and I'm gonna throw some mozzarella cheese over it yeah mozzarella the gooey stuff can't forget about the parmesan <laughs> sorry bless you thank you <laughs> cameo cameo <laughs> Now the rest of that mozzarella we're gonna use for the topping. So this just shows that if you want a quality meal, a lot of time has to go into it. Everything from the beginning to end, mm -hmm. a lot of time. If you want something that tastes amazing, you want something that tastes good, gotta take your time with it. You know why? Because guess what we're putting into this? <laughs> what? Good old L O B E. <laughs> good old love. <laughs> the secret ingredient. That's the secret ingredient to any best dish. Any best dish. So we'll throw a little bit more cheese in there. Now, it looks like regular cheese, right? It looks like regular American cheese. This is actually sharp cheddar cheese in slices. And then we're gonna fold it, see? And cut it some more. Layer it in there just to give it color. We're not using it for flavor. Then we'll throw some more of these in there. Our sauce is ready now. Mm, extra juicy. Look at that. It smells lovely too, smell it. <laughs> just pour easy. Pour some more. Gotta be careful a little bit, you don't want it to spill over. Now we gotta add the chicken. Left and mix. Left and mix. Now some people can eat it like this and they will enjoy it. It does come out good, but me, like I said, I like to put a little extra love in there and a little flavor and I like to let the flavor sit in there. So we're gonna throw it in the oven one last time. The cheese is in there for the color. All right, so now let's add some chicken. Yummy. Now a lot of the lemon flavor is gonna come from the chicken as well into the pasta. Because remember, we marinated it in the lemon and we let it sit in there too. Not to mention when we cooked it, we cooked it over lemon. Oh, there go that lemon, it surfaced. Mm -hmm. The lemon surfaced. You gotta be real gentle and slow because you don't want to waste anything. You gotta move it around and get everywhere. Because the main part is you want the chicken to taste like the Alfredo as well. Because we did put a little extra ingredients in the Alfredo. So it doesn't taste like jar Alfredo really. The lemon again! <laughs> <laughs> so now that we mixed it up, we moved it around as much as possible. This is what we will do. We're gonna take another slice of cheese. The final layer. Slide that there, you know, put a little bit of pizza there. Put our mozzarella on top. The oven has been getting hot and preheated since we started. So that way it's already hot and we don't have to worry about it. And what temp is that? 350. Let's put it to 400. Only to make sure that everything is cooking, you know. Don't exceed 400 because then it'll start burning. Alright, so now we have our pot. Back to our foil. Cover it up before it goes in the oven. If you want that cheese to really melt, you cover it up. You have to be perfect with it because if you don't, you might miss one step and then it ruins the whole thing. Then you really didn't put any love in it. <laughs> <laughs> so now you always want to support the bottom. So we'll take our rag here and support it from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> Throw it in there. We'll leave it in there from anywhere from 20 to a half hour. And then I'll show you the finished product. <gasps> yeah. How long did we leave it in the oven? So we left it in there for about 30 minutes. And now it's time to reveal <gasps> what we have here. Oh my god, yum. There you go. 
So Adam and I have been doing this for hours. Oh. <laughs> Adam and I cooked and look what we made. Well, he did it. <laughs> she helped. She <laughs> Yummy. Thank you, Adam. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Final touches. Okay, Adam. <laughs> we got taste test. I'm sure it'll be good. Because what's the secret ingredient? L O V E. <laughs> oh, look at that. Juice. Extra juice. Extra juice. Extra juice. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is so good. Good job, Adam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now it's time to make my plate. <laughs> oh my god, this is so good. Adam, are you getting fan engagement? I am getting a lot of fan <laughs> engagement. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Oh my god! See, so, you got a little fan love there too. I got fan love! <laughs> Thank you for watching Live with Kali. I hope that Adam's tips and tricks in the kitchen will be helpful for you. Please let me know if you try his pasta recipe and how you liked it. Send pictures, let me know how it tasted, and I will get the word back to Adam. And he will be so happy to know that you all tried it. Tune back in very soon. I have a musical guest to show you his singing talent. And I will see you all very very soon. Thank you for watching Live with Kali. I'm Kali Nyang and I'm gonna go eat more pasta.